Hello, my friends. Welcome to PMI ACP Prep, where we talk about the Project Management Institute Agile Certified Practitioner exam. We're going to be talking all about the ACP today and how you can get certified in 2023. There are advantages of the PMI ACP certification. It's designed for project managers who are interested in Agile as a mindset and learning more about the frameworks. It teaches you skills and knowledge needed to lead Agile teams. It's highly sought after by employers in a variety of industries. By earning the PMI ACP certification, you'll become a valuable asset to any organization that uses this concept that has adopted the mindset of agility. One of the key benefits of the PMI ACP is that it builds even more on your PMP certification. It helps you understand how to apply agile principles to your projects and your work. And it teaches you how to integrate agile and traditional project management practices, which is what a lot of firms are looking for. You could be good in traditional, but you also need to have agile down pat. This is crucial in today's fast paced and ever changing business environment. Our trainers at Praiseon, my buddy Roy and I, we are experts in this arena, having a wealth of knowledge and experience and relevant certifications to our credit. We will guide you through the entire program. We will get you to that level of confidence where you are able to take on and pass the PMI ACP exam. Now, we understand that earning another certification can seem daunting after PMP. Some people are like, no, Phil, I don't want to do anything for the next five years. I understand that. But we're here to make the process as smooth and as stress-free as possible as we have done for lots of our students in the past. Case in point, let's listen to what our friend Taji has to say about her experience. After getting PMP certified, she jumped straight into one of our boot camps and got ACP certified within six weeks. Let's listen to what she has to say. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends, wherever you are in the world. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our friend Taji. PMP and PMI ACP boss in the space of how many weeks, Taji? <laughs> oh, are you on mute? I think you are. I'm on mute. Um, I started working with you back in September, September 2nd. Wow. I think it was the official day. I received my PMP. About six weeks later, October 18th, hmm. and then another six weeks later, <laughs> okay. I got an ACP. <laughs> so I spent about three months working with you. Oh, my gosh. It's so commendable. I don't know if folks really know how challenging it is to pull these two off. I mean, there are folks you met getting ready for PMP that are still working on PMP if you get what I mean, and you were able to come into the program, tool up, get kitted up, and kill yeah, but We all have lives, you know, and everybody's life is different in what capacity they can put toward, um, you know, working on this exam. It's I'm fortunate true. to have a really great support system at home. Also a job where, you know, I'm on the road, I can do things, you know, it's, when it's you're not phenomenal. stuck in the office, I can study. But, yeah, but you got teenagers, and that, that's that's one excuse to not do anything. You know, you got you got one teenager. That's you know enough. Now you got twins. You got double double joy. <laughs> I won't say trouble, double joy. So you're busy. So what propels you? How do you set? How? Why did you prioritize this as I need to do it now? Because you could have said uh, maybe another another year, and I'll pick this one up. Why now? Because I thought it would just would be a nice fluid transition. I was learning so much about being an agilist. I didn't want to wait a year. I thought I would be missing the momentum because I was already geared up. I was, it was, I was already in the mix. I was like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and finish it out now, not wait a mm -hmm. year and get it done before the holiday season so I can have my holiday to relax. <laughs> and that's the idea, my friends. You want to strike while the iron is hot. You see, the ACP exam, a lot of folks may not have read into it, but it is not insurmountable, especially for those of you that are PMPs. So let's talk a little bit about Agile. It is 
critical to note that Agile is not a methodology, as you probably have already heard from me on this channel. It's a mindset, right? So Agile uses these models that are very heavily based on people collaboration, shared values, talking about how cross-functional teams are allowed to self-lead, self-organize, and self-manage, right? There is a frustration when it comes to having to do things step by step by step, and especially when it doesn't fit. And that's what informed the Agile Manifesto, right? This presentation is available on PMI's website, by the way. I'll show you where it is. But by dividing production into small components called iterations that could be simply and rapidly developed and tested, modifications could be made without having to wait to the end of the product. So you already know this story. You already know a little bit, hopefully, about Scrum and how in Scrum we call iteration sprints. So this is not an entirely new story to you. For those of you that are learning new, here are some examples to illustrate the application of agile principles and practices. For those of you who may not have gotten any agile experience or training, be aware of this, right? So early measurable return on investment through defined iterative delivery of product increments. That's an example of agile thinking. Don't wait till the end of five years before you begin realizing value and benefits. Do things in iteration so that your customers can begin to realize those benefits earlier. High visibility of project progress allows early identification and resolution or monitoring of problems. News travels fast in the world of Agile, right? Continuous involvement of the customer all throughout the product development life cycle. These are the things we're talking about. Organizations that use agile principles and are agile in their mindset, mindset, right, and practices have documented the value they see from the philosophy, agile, right, so mindset and techniques, being adaptive to the changing business needs, giving the organization more influence over adding, changing, or removing requirements something that a lot of firms struggle with when they are purely traditional. Early and continuous feedback from the customer. Early measurable ROI. The PMI ACP certification offers you a PMP, if you are a PMP, an additional certification that makes you stand out as an agile professional. That's why it's called Agile Certified Practitioners, right? Practitioners believe that this certification is hugely benef beneficial to their already existing career in traditional project management. The PMI ACP was developed to help project management practitioners thrive in the challenges of globally distributed teams, shifting requirements, and the need for rapid responses. The PMI ACP recognizes knowledge of Agile principles and practices across Agile methodologies, including Scrum, Lean, Kanban, and so on. The ACP recognizes an individual's expertise in using Agile practices in their projects. It is not relegated to Scrum. It is ecumenical, to, for lack of a better word. It is agnostic, and it allows you to stand out from the crowd. It also supports individuals in meeting the needs of organizations that rely on project practitioners to apply a diversity of methods to their project management, specifically validates a practitioner's ability to understand and apply agile principles and practices. So it delivers strong positive outcomes. I can assure you in our training, because there are many ways people could get trained, but in our training in particular, if you go on down to praiseion.com and you look for the PMI ACP Masterclass, our training gets you to a state of pragmatism where you're not just reading, you are able to practice what you're learning. We give students the ability to interact and network and interconnect. And in the previous video that I showed you, our friends in that video are all in the same class and they are all PMI ACP certified, as we'll hear from more of our friends 
from that class. Let's listen to our friend Chandra, what she has to say. Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome. I'm here with my awesome PMP guru, Chandra, who also happens to have aced the ACP exam that a lot of people have been thinking of taking after the PMP. So Chandra, I want to say a huge congratulations to you. How do you feel now you've got PMP and ACP? How does that feel? It's a great uh, feeling, actually, Phil. Thank you so much. And uh, I feel so light. Now I'm ready to enjoy my holidays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, we are traveling next week. So oh, wow. Lovely. Good. And another surprise is when I shared that I completed my PMP with my manager and all, it was okay, okay, respond. Okay, congratulations. That's it. Whatever, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea how much. Yeah. How much work and effort you put in. Yeah. I want to say a huge congrats and a huge well done. Chandra, we have a few folks who are going to be watching who may not know about how this exam is. So let's talk about a few things. Why ACP? For me. For me. Yeah. Why, Why did I... you take it? Yeah. Why did you want to take it? Yeah, uh, see, because recently I completed PMP where we went through a lot of agile concepts and all. So when those uh, concepts are fresh in my mind, I wanted to complete ACP also. Mm, because uh, uh, that is one thing. And also in, the, in my office at work, uh, we are using agile a lot nowadays. And I, I'm a product owner for my operations and all. So if I have all these things, see, that's what I, uh, when I shared that I completed my PMP, they didn't give that much, they didn't realize or recognize it, didn't say any word. But mm -hmm. when I shared that I completed uh, ACP, mm -hmm. my manager was so happy. And mm. then there was a meeting this morning and she was congratulating me in front of the whole team. Wow. So you hear that PMI ACP from Chandra, who's sharing now, is recognized. People understand that this is not a cakewalk kind of exam. It is right up there with all those other agile exams, and I actually dare say more difficult because I have taken other exams in agile space like the CSM. This is at least four times to be conservative more challenging than the CSM exam. So to pass the PMI ACP, my friends, you really know your stuff. You really have your chops. That's really what this is saying. So I want to encourage you to look into it. I'm going to show you here on PMI's website. If you go over here, you click on this download button. It's going to open up the ACP content outline, and I'm going to very rapidly show you what exactly is in this outline. So this outline hasn't been revised for a while because Agile is not as changeable in terms of the syllabus. It's pretty clear cut. I mean, the Scrum Guide, which is the most widely used Agile framework, has only 13 pages. So it's really heavily testing you on mindset. As you can see here on the screen, make it a bit bigger, we can see that Agile Principles and Mindset, 16% of the exam, value-driven delivery, 20% of the exam, that's already over a third of the exam, stakeholder engagement, team performance, adaptive planning, problem detection and resolution, continuous improvement, product, process, and people. You can see that if you were in a class with me and Roy and you learned all those Agile concepts I taught you, you are going to be able to very quickly, very readily warm up to this content. This is not insurmountable stuff. So why don't you take advantage of it? It just makes sense to strike while the iron is hot, you see? So you got Agile Principles and Mindset, nine tasks, value-driven delivery, 14 tasks in that same style, you know, 
So there are seven domains and you can see the number of tasks per domain. We'll just do one example and then you can read the rest on your own. So this is the second largest area, but it's about agile principles, right? Advocate for agile principles by modeling those principles. This is an, a mindset, right? Model the mindset, demonstrate the mindset. That's what this task is asking. So if you get questions on the exam where you need to model the mindset because you're going to be trained in the Agile Manifesto values and principles, accentuating them, going to that next level, because I know some of you have already done this in the training with Roy and I. In, in this class, we're going to the next level. And this is where you are actually going to shine as someone who understands those principles because we're going to be discussing them in a pragmatic way. So you're really going to come away knowing this stuff. This is none of that death by PowerPoint, none of that, you know, video punishment where people just watching videos without interaction. No, heavy interaction in this class. All right. So for those of you thinking about signing up, just go on down. You see the ticker tape below. Uh, go on down to praiseon.com. We've got a really good offer going compared to many other firms. This is a crazy deal based on the level of expertise that you're going to be exposed to in this training. All right. Number two, help ensure that everyone has a common understanding of the values and principles of Agile. Number three, support change at the system or organization level by educating the organization and influencing processes, behaviors, and people in order to make the organization more effective, practice visualization. I'm going to now summarize four down. Practice visualization, use concepts like the information radiator, contribute to a safe and trustful team environment. Remember what it tells you to do in the Agile Manifesto. Give the team the environment and support they need. Trust them to get the job done. That's the summary. Number six, enhance creativity by experimenting with new technologies and process ideas in order to discover more efficient and effective ways. So what does it say? It says the team should tune and adjust at the end of every cycle. But not just that, they should also continually have it as a mindset. That's what number six is saying, right? It's also saying that the best architectures and designs, they emerge from self-organizing teams, they got to experiment. They got to innovate. That's what this is saying. This is what agility does. Encourage team members to share knowledge by collaborating and working together in order to lower risks around knowledge silos and reduce bottlenecks. Number eight, encourage emergent leadership within the team by establishing a safe and respectful environment. This is where leaders emerge naturally and they are respected just organically, not because leadership titles are conferred on them, but because the team is an organism that goes through its own metamorphosis for leaders to emerge. And lastly, nine, practice servant leadership, which is well explained in the Agile Practice Guide, which we'll also be looking at, again, putting another layer of paint on it. And that is just the first domain, all right? And this is what the course is based on. The course follows these domains. We have a book called Agile Principle for you to use to study. And what you're going to realize is that you already know a lot more than you think you know. You know a lot more than you think you do, especially those of you who are PMPs. And if you're not a PMP and you are interested in this and you're able to meet the requirements, that's okay. Come for the ride. Go on down to the ticker tape below. You see it's praiseon.com. Now, we're going to listen to one more friend, our friend Frank, who was also in the class that you just saw. And he is going to be speaking about his own experience and how he achieves success on the ACP exam. Let's listen to what he has to say. Let's listen to our buddy Frank. He's got something to tell us about his experience. Here we go. ACP and today Frank is going to share with us his lessons learned because he's now an ACP. Woo! <laughs> Frank, how you feel, man? Um, kind of a feud. Good. Uh, Are you still in a daze? Because I remember when you got PMP certified, we were encouraging you to jump on the horse and come with us. Come with us, Frank. 
And you did. You did. I was really elated when you did. But it seems like yesterday, just it just seems like it was yesterday when I was saying, Frank, don't, you know, strike while the iron is hot. And here you are as an ACP. That's that's crazy. Honestly, it's crazy to me. So, Frank, tell us what catapulted you into ACP? Did you really give it a lot of thought or did you just listen to your buddy Phil? What happened? Tell us. Yeah, like um, I did mention to you that uh, I want to go into program management and um, EMP became the stepping stone. Um, and I also told you that uh, because I am already within the Agile space, mm. uh, I would like to also take a deep dive into Agile. So the day I did the PMP, October 29th, was actually the day the class of ACP started. Wow. So uh, after the exam, I spoke with you and um, you said, um, I said I'll wait for the next class. <laughs> you said, no, that you believe I, I should be able to catch up. Um, I said, uh, I, I provided I don't get myself uh, pressured. Uh, <laughs> I've had enough pressure from PMP. So, <laughs> so you said, no, that uh, I should be good. So that you know that I can pull it through. So. Uh, so that encouragement did spur me into action, and um, I registered. Uh, started with the um, with uh, Chandra and Taji. Yeah, and um, it was a nice sessions we had with you and Roy. And Roy, excellent, Roy. Del excellent delivery of the agile principles and mindset, the value driven delivery, the continuous improvement, stakeholder engagement. And all those are adaptive planning and the <clears throat> problems, problem um, detection and resolution, all those areas that um, the SCP is uh, dwells on. So mm. uh, we had a good um, delivery from you guys. We we can't thank you guys enough for a well tailored uh, materials uh, that you gave us. It was quite a bespoke. Um, and like you know me, during the PMP, I resisted myself to your materials. Mm. Um, I didn't go after their materials. And um, something happened in the SCP, I didn't go after their materials. Mm. I'm, I'm scared of voluminous uh, books. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I want to resist myself to what you have been given. So that's I smart. See. All right, you're hearing what our buddy Frank is saying. He restricted himself to our materials. Our materials are sufficient. You're going to get a book, Agile Principles. Agile Principles book covers everything that you need to know about Agile that will get you through this test. In addition to that, we also recommend a few other books that you may already have. PMI's Agile Practice Guide. We also recommend reading the Scrum Guide if you haven't already read it. And just doing those and then taking our copious mock exams for each area will get you to dry land on this exam. Okay. Now, as far as the content is concerned, um, don't worry about the content. We've got you covered. We're going to be covering the entire uh, spectrum of domains. Uh, in terms of the eligibility, because I hear that as a question, if you look on the screen here, the eligibility is you either have a secondary uh, high school diploma as the, the base of the educational background. And on top of that, uh, you should have either the general project management experience of 2,000 hours. Uh, if you are a PMP, you don't need this because that is implicitly woven into your PMP, so you can skip this. But the agile project experience, you should have 1,500 hours. That's about eight months working on project teams using Agile methodologies. The experience must have been earned in the last three years. These hours are in addition to the 2,000 hours. So if you don't have a PMP, you need 2,000 hours and then uh, 2,000 hours of general project experience and then another 1,500 hours of Agile project experience. But if you are a PMP, then it's just this, okay? And then in addition to that, the training in Agile practices 21 contact hours must have been earned in Agile practices. For those of you that came on the Praiseon course, you already know that we start you off on Agile. So for those of you 
who have gone through a Praiseon project management masterclass, you have already gone through a wild amount of content nearing this number. So if any of you who has been for the Praiseon training for PMP, if any of you is interested in this, you need to send an email to info so that you can be in on certain offers we have for those of you that came on the project management masterclass specifically. Not the immersion, but the masterclass specifically. If you have been on the masterclass, then there is an additional discount for those students who have been to the masterclass. If you haven't been to a masterclass, there's still great offers on praiseon.com. So check out the website. Check out what we have available for you on praiseon.com, okay? Again, you wanna go on down to this website and you wanna take a look at the information. Now, if you go down to the way it's broken out, we have week one, domain one, week two, domain two, week three, domain three, and then on week four, we're gonna hit domain four and five, and week five, we're gonna hit domain six and seven. All right, so go on down to the Praiseon website and see what we have available for you, my friend. There are not a lot of these happening in 2023, so take advantage of this iteration of training, okay? I hope you found this to be informative. I hope you found this to be inspiring to know that you too can get your ACP. Go on down to the ticker tape, praiseon.com, or just go on down to projectmanagementdoctor.com forward slash PMIACP. It will lead you directly to this page. I wish you all the best in your journey. Let's jump on the wagon. Let's get ACP certified and move on.